Well, all right, here we are. It is Monday. It is Move Monday. I'm Pastor Bobby D. Hamilton from the Great Friendship Church, and you know what day it is. You know what time it is. I'm so glad to see you again here on this Monday. It is that day that we do what we do, and that's we we move, and we encourage one another to move equally together. You can see I've made a move. I got up early this morning, got my sunrise six in. Yes, I did. It was cold. It was windy. It was wet, but I still able to get my sunrise six in because that's just what we do. We just move, we just move and get our run in and we work and we do what we got to do and we do it collectively together. That's the important part about this move Monday. Now you see me kind of moving around and changing, just a- angle and everything because I'm in a, preparing for a class. I already got my run in, I'm now preparing to get my ride in. I'm now situated in this, in this spin class, these cycles. And so I'm preparing my, my bike, preparing my cycle for this spin class and we're going to spin it out, we're going to ride it out. Uh, hard for at least a good 45, 50, 50 minutes, because that's just what we do. We find a diversity of ways to make sure that we're always in the business of moving. I'm trying to get this bike right, trying to get my seat right, and just trying to make sure that I can sit up here right and stay in this whole class. And so do what I do, and we do what you do. And I always encourage you just to move. Whatever you may need to do, just move. I don't know how you do it, where you do it. That's what this is really about. It's not about us all doing the same thing. <clears throat> I'm a runner. I'm a cyclist and all those kind of things. And so you may be a mirror things yourself. It's just about us just putting in the work. And today we're going to put in the work once again together. And while we're doing it, let me just give a big old shout out. Let me give a big old shout out to a brother I met yesterday. Wait for it. He's in a water polo. Can you imagine that? Water polo. Uh, he trains in 12 feet of water. It's a combination of swimming, a uh, combination of, of, of kind of like soccer in the water. And that's what he does. Isn't that amazing that we got someone who's in a water polo? Some of you are not in the water, and the only polo you're into is wearing uh, polo shirts. But he does water polo. So I give you a big shout out. And for all the rest of you who are doing kickboxing and all the rest of you who are doing walking and walking your dogs and, and, and cutting your yards and you name it, you're doing it. And, and, and I meet you. And I'm so glad to meet you. And I see you all around the town. And some of you even email me. Some of you text me and tell me that you're moving. And we just had a challenge at the church, a 21-day challenge with the sisters. And the sisters had a challenge. They were moving. And so we thank God. We had a sister testify yesterday about how she's enjoying her time of moving and how it made her healthier. That's what this is really about, becoming healthier. And so, as I said, we have so many things on our list, on our plate. And we take care of everything and everybody but ourselves. And this is just to encourage you to take care of yourself. Just take care of the, the temple. As I always say, it's about a stewardship. God has given you this wonderful body. It may not be a perfect body. May, <laughs> it may not have the perfect dimension. It may not be what you want, but it's your body. And God wants you to do the best you can with your body to honor him with your body. It's, it's one thing for the Lord to, to call you home. Something else for you just to go home because you didn't take care of your body. I want you to take care of your body. I want you to move. I want you to find what works for you and do that thing over and over again. Whether it is Pilates or maybe it's yoga or maybe it is lifting a, a, a myriad of things. You choose it. You do it and encourage us along the way. Let us know what you're doing. Now, while you're moving, make your way over to YouTube. I've been in this sermon series at the Friendship Church entitled We're Better Together. The premise of the series is simply this, that God made us communal beings. We're made in the very imago day, the image of God. And God is a communal being. He makes to be in community. And the church, the body of Christ is better when we're collectively tied together. I know that is a very diverse statement today. I know that there's a very statement that caused a lot of contrition because we want to be independent people. And yet it doesn't work. It only works when the body of Christ, the body of believers are united collectively together. And that's what this is really about. How do we become better together? In week one, I talked about the importance of us in being comfort us one another. When we're in pain, we, we were in pain together. But yesterday, I talked about church. I talked about I'm glad, I'm glad I came to church out of Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And we talked about how those people, how they're, how they're, in, great, they're in great persecution and trial and tribulation. And one thing that, that they extracted from their experience was going to the fellowship, the assembling of the saints. And I talked about how we also, many times, we extract ourselves from the assembly of the saints. We don't worship together. One of the things that the pandemic has done is many times expose many times our own heart's desire when it comes to being in the assembly of the saints. So here's the question. 
What precludes you from consistently going to assemble with the saints? There's a myriad of things that you can, there's a myriad of reasons that you may have. But, the, but he's talking about the importance of what? Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, which is the habit, the ritual, the custom of many. And you could be in that category yourself. There's power when the body of Christ gets together. There's power when the body of believers come together. In spite of the weather, in spite of our woes, in spite of our weariness, there's something that happens dynamically, supernaturally, when the body of Christ with the right spirit and the right mind for the right purpose comes together. And that's what this is about, encourage you to come together with other believers. It's interesting in the text that it talked about that we need to also encourage one another. That one of the reasons for coming together, watch this, hold it, wait for it, is not for what you get, but also what you can give. And so many times when it comes to, to, to congregational gathering, when it comes to the assembly of believers, whether in a large group or in a small group, we oftentimes come based on what we can get. We have a communal a consumer mentality when it comes to the congregation. We want what we want, and we'll go anywhere to get it. And yet the Bible is saying not just what you get, but also what are you giving? What are you bringing to the table? you got a lot to bring to the table. We live in a very discouraging, depressing, dysfunctional time. And there are people around you in your family. There's friends. There's people in your sorority. There's people who are also, also who are in your cubicle down the hall who are discouraging. And they feel disenfranchised. And what they need is encouragement. Are you an encourager? What is your EQ? What is your encouragement quotient? If you were to ask your, your family, ask your child, ask your spouse, ask your closest friend, ask your coworkers. If you were to ask them, how encouraging am I? What would they say? For many of you, you are adding to someone's discouragement. They need you to encourage, to come, paracalesa, to come alongside and to lift them up and encourage them with your encouraging words and your encouraging action and your encouraging resources and your encouraging time, your encouraging testimony. Today, somebody needs you to lift them up. They've been beat down by the world and the woes. They've been beat down by cancer and beat down by lupus. They've been, they've been, they've been beat down by bearing another loved one. And they need you today to be someone that lifts them up. As Christ lifts you up, you should lift others up. So who can you lift up today? Somebody's waiting on your phone call, waiting on your text message. They're waiting for you to drive by. They're, you got to stop quarantining yourself to yourself. You've got to come out. You can't be someone who says, I don't like people. I don't do men. I don't do women. You, you don't understand. You don't understand who you are as the body of Christ. That's our responsibility. We have been connected to connect. And I'm trying to encourage you today. Oh, I want you to go to YouTube and pull it down. Look at it. I told you, but I'm glad I came to church. It, it, that when you oftentimes don't want to go and you do go and the spirit of God meets you there and God's people meet you there. There's something that dynamic happened and you came there feeling like junk, but you leave feeling with joy. God is a mighty God. And I want to encourage you today. To be an encourager. Oh, today, no matter what the weather is, no matter what your 401k is, no matter what, what Amazon brings or doesn't bring to your front door, you ought to lift somebody up and pick somebody out today that you're going to simply encourage them because they need you. God in his sovereignty has left you here to be a perpetual encourager in these dark, difficult, dingy days. Somebody needs you to encourage them. And so with the encouragement you have received, you need to give it. And on Wednesday night at the Friendship Church, I'm going to talk about what happens when we don't get the encouragement. What happens when we function as we are islands of isolation? What happens when we leave one another to ourselves? I'm going to talk about that on Wednesday night at the Friendship Church because I'm glad I came to church. I feel so much better on Monday because of what happened on Sunday. What a mighty God we serve. Now I've got this bike straight. I got to get my clips in here. I got to start pedaling this bike. I don't know how many miles I'm going to do. I ran six miles this morning, but I don't know how many I'm going to cycle out. But I'm going to cycle out enough to encourage myself, to remind myself that when I meet with God and I meet with God's people, oh, I'm so much better. Aren't you so much better? Oh, pass that better word out to somebody today because somebody's bitter 
Oh, but what a mighty God we serve. God is able supernaturally to turn the bitter into better. Thank God for this day. I thank God for you. Share this with somebody. And whatever you do today, move, 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 and encourage someone as you move. I got to get it, y'all. I got to go. I got to adjust my dial as I adjust my life, as I adjust my moving, because this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. And I'll see you Wednesday night at the Friendship Church, a place to begin again. Have a great day. Have a great day. Have a great day. And encourage someone all day long. Because I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad that I came to church. See you soon. Bye-bye.